Welcome everyone to today's edition of Willow's Weather Briefing. Today is Tuesday, June 3rd, 2025. Today we have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms from central Texas all the way up to the Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri triple points. We also have a slight risk of excessive rainfall for many of these co-located regions. We also have a slight risk of excessive rainfall here in southern Florida associated with a broad disturbance down here and associated tropical moisture. The Canadian wildfires is still bringing wildfire smoke to portions of the upper Midwest and upper Great Lakes. Otherwise, pretty quiet weather for the eastern and western United States, near normal to warm conditions for much of the these regions. And the, these, uh, so the southeast moving cold front will bring stark temperature contrast throughout the central United States and also some disturbed weather. We can already see on satellite here disturbed weather across the central United States, some showers and thunderstorms across these regions, and we expect a reinvigoration of severe weather this afternoon. So here is actually yesterday's storm reports. SPC's website is kind of broken right now. But as you can see, this box right here, this is yesterday's storm reports. Yesterday was actually upgraded to an enhanced wind-driven risk. And as you can see, it verified decently with wind reports all over these regions. Here is our drought monitor. The solid lines demarcate the areas of highest concern with drought. And here is our current watches and warnings. We have a flood watch for much of the central plains into the Ozark and Missouri River Valley over here, associated with some uh, ongoing convection and rainfall and also the continuation of that into the afternoon and evening hours. Also an air quality alert up here into the uh, upper Midwest and into the upper, mid, uh, upper Great Lakes, associated with that Canadian wildfire smoke. And also some flood watches here in southern Florida associated with that flooding risk. Here's our current surface map. We have this broad cold front moving through the central United States right now. Of course, you'll see pretty cool temperatures on the north side of the front, the cool side of the front. And above normal temperatures for this region in the east associated with some high pressure. We have a broad surface trough uh, bringing some tropical moisture and some vorticity in here, bringing some lift to some of those tropical storms down in Florida. This cold front over here in the central United States will move southeast, bringing us some flooding and severe weather threats. Tomorrow, the cold front will continue progressing to the southeast, bringing cooler temperatures for an extended region in the central United States. You'll see above average temperatures here associated with high pressure in the northeast, the west largely clear and dry. So we finally see this cold front starting to stall around this region. And we see over here on day three, Thursday, this warm front is starting to lift back up into the regions of the central United States associated with an impinging upper level system that's going to bring this warm air a little bit northward to these regions, bringing us an additional severe weather threat over here for the central to southern plains on day three Thursday. Here is our excessive rainfall look for today. Day one slight risk for much of the central to southern plains and also for southern Florida. For this slight risk over here, we should see close to one inch per hour rates, possibly uh, close to three inches of accumulation, especially for the central areas of the slight risk region from Oklahoma to Missouri. We also have a slight risk down here in southern Florida associated with two inch per hour rates. Uh, most of this area should see about three inches of rain, possible five inches of rain with localized totals, depending on where exactly that convection sits over and migrates and trains over. Day two, marginal risks of rainfall over scattered portions of the U.S. Day three, another slight risk of excessive rainfall in northern Oklahoma. 
in southern Kansas. Bring, this will bring potential for a localized 2 to 3 inch totals on Thursday. On Friday, another slight risk here in Oklahoma. We have actually on uh, Friday and Saturday kind of co-located regions of slight risk. This should bring uh, training rainfall due to that now stalling front over that region should bring multiple days of trading rainfall. And one of the concerns here is that because we have multiple areas of slight risk on top of each other, you do a kind of expect soils to moisten, be able to hold less water in them. So we, we are concerned of some particular uh, flash flooding risk in areas that have sort of stacked uh, risks of excessive rainfall day after day. Now, looking at the tropics, we're going to be starting. Uh, we're going to be looking at the tropics a little bit more now that it's officially hurricane season, and just in time, we have a ten percent chance of cyclone formation for this area. This is not expected to be anything significant. This is just a disturbance that's moving into the east coast. It might bring some uh, tropical moisture into the east coast, which might bring some flash flooding risk to these regions. But this is not expected to really uh, intensify into a, into a hurricane anything, in my opinion. This is just expected to possibly take on some tropical characteristics, which might bring some tropical moisture into the outer banks of the east coast. So here is our severe weather outlook. Let's go back to today. Slight risk of severe weather from central Texas to the Illinois, Iowa, Missouri triple point. Primary hazards are wind for the entire risk area and large hail, primarily for the southern extent. Tornado threat is pretty low today because of uncertainties with the convective evolution. You do expect things to grow upscale fairly quickly. And also the lack of low-level shear, low-level response. You just don't expect the tornado threat to be that significant today. Here is our day two outlook, patches of marginal risk over here in the uh, high plains to portions of the southwest. Also a marginal risk here associated with the progressing cold front over here in the Midwest to Great Lakes region. Day three, we do have a slight risk for portions of the high plains, the central to southern high plains over to the Ozark Plateau around here. Again, primary hazards are going to be damaging wind. The evolution of the hazards is still pretty uncertain, but for the next few days from Thursday to Saturday, we do expect storms to initiate a bit more clustered, a bit, a little bit more discreet on western ends and then transform into a more MCS where we'll get more damaging winds over towards the eastern extent of each risk. So expect the same sort of pattern with these risks, more uncertain all hazard risks on the western extent and more of a damaging wind risk with eastern extent as we get that upscale growth and MCS formation. This is the same thing for day four Friday. With the western extent, storms will form, cluster up, possibly with a large hail, maybe a small tornado threat, and then grow upscale as they move on east towards these eastern extents and then bring you some damaging wind threats, possibly significant damaging wind threats, depending on how the MCS organizes. Exact same thing on day five Saturday. Western extent, possibly some clustering, maybe some large hail, and a small tornado threat moving on east, growing upscale into a more MCS-like system with primarily damaging wind threats, possibly a small tornado threat, depending on the nature of the MCS. But we will get more specific on the exact hazards as the days move on. But generally, that's the pattern we're looking at today. Western extent, all hazards, primarily looking at large hail, and with eastern extent primarily looking at large wind. Here we go with our heat risk. We have some mild weather throughout the eastern United States ahead of that cold front, but of course that cold front will push through, bring some cooler temperatures into portions of the central U.S. Heat will linger around the eastern U.S. throughout late week, and then we start to build another heat wave here in the southern U.S. 
by late week. And let's just look at some place like around Houston. We do expect temps to reach up to the high 90s and only get down to the high 70s, low 80s, with heat indices possibly reaching up to 110 degrees in these regions. So another heat wave on deck for areas such as southern Texas and southern Louisiana. And also we have above average temperatures for much of the west here. We have an elevated heat risk for much of the west coast, which could see much above average temperatures by the weekend into early next week. Here is our extended range hazard map. Uh, mainly heavy rain for much of the eastern United States, east of the Rockies, with patches over here in the central U.S. and patches here in the Midwest, Great Lakes, into the northeast. We also have hazardous heat on deck for much of the uh, southern United States and severe weather on deck for the uh, southern high plains into the central plains. Here's our 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, June 8th through June 12th. We have above average temperatures for much of the western United States and southern United States, while near normal throughout much of the central United States. Here is our 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook, above average for the southeastern United States, below average for the northwest, or specifically the Pacific Northwest. Now, finally, let's look at our href model to see the exact timing of these storms. Right now, it is about 1z. So, we see, obviously, what we saw in satellite, this uh, scattered uh, severe weather or scattered thunderstorms and rainfall across the central United States right now. That will slowly make its way off to the east, possibly training on top of each other, giving us some of that rainfall risk but we will see a reinvigoration of convection as we move on into the afternoon hours as we get additional heating from the sun we should see upscale growth in eastern kansas as early as noon possibly and further south we should see quick upscale growth down there by mid-afternoon into the late afternoon so pretty early on we should see that upscale growth beginning and overspreading much of the risk area and translating into an MCS or linear system by uh, early evening. So definitely overspreading the risk area by mid-afternoon and late afternoon with southern extent. Northern extent, you're already getting some of those showers and gloomy weather. So in terms of timing, that's sort of what we're looking at all day for northern portions of the risk area and reinvigoration with southern extent by uh, mid-afternoon. So that is going to be it for today's weather briefing. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any constructive criticisms. And also, of course, as always, if you want any specific information regarding your area, please refer to your local National Weather Service or broadcast meteorologists. Thank you and have a great day.